Hi everyone, my name is Professor Tanya Hertz, and this is the ultimate chapter of Business 100, which is a chapter on information systems and technology. And this uh, chapter is located in Canvas, your PowerPoint slides should be there ready to go, so I'll go ahead and open those now. If you need closed captions, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> Closed captions are available by clicking on the little CC at the bottom of the screen. Let's go ahead and quickly get through this chapter. I'll say that. I'll do my best to get through it quickly. So there has been a drastic change in communications, computer hardware, and software over the last few decades. <coughs> hardware consists of components such as printers, barcodes, routers, and scanners, and system software and application software have been used or have used the tremendous increase in the hardware ca capabilities to become more capable, more powerful, and easier to use. System software performs the critical functions that are required to operate computers at the most basic level. And application software helps the users to perform a desired task. And these days, most firms and homes have networks that allow users to communicate with one another, to share hardware resources, and to share files. Computer resources are linked by networks, either using a wireless or a wired connection. The internet, internet2, intranet, and extranet are all different types of networks as shown on slide five. Uh, a lot of companies do have, do provide access for employees to access an intranet. Uh, and, and some companies now are starting to actually provide employees to uh, access to extranets. And employees in most companies access data and use applications that are stored on companies' servers uh, or on their own computers. Uh, but this is, there's really been a big shift. More and more companies are starting to take up uh, cloud computing because it has so many benefits. And um, it's actually really becoming more of a feasible solution, not just, it was always for entrepreneurs, but, um, and mid sized companies, but even large companies are starting to use cloud computing now. So, cloud computing. Uh, cloud computing uh, replaces that internally owned IT uh, so that companies can use internet-based storage rather than using their own resources. There, there are a lot of benefits to cloud computing. Um, it <coughs> tends to be significantly cheaper, significantly cheaper for most companies. Uh, it tends to have excess capability or capacity for, for many companies. Um, there is an array of computing resources for most cloud, uh, for most companies with, with cloud computing. Encourages cloud, including encouraging collaboration among employees and business partners. Um, incredible gains in processing speeds. Talk a little bit about data and information. So IT helps transform data into information that can be used by, uh, by the decision makers. Data are a collection of facts and figures. Data in their raw form have limited usefulness because they lack the context needed to give them meaning. Files are organized in a systematic order in a database. A company might have different, uh, different databases to meet its different needs. And IT departments work closely with managers to support their decision-making processes. They help managers convert data into good information efficiently and quickly. Business intelligence system help businesses find complex and subtle relationships that uh, often they end up getting hidden in data. One of the most common approaches to implement a business intelligence systems is to create a data warehouse and use data mining to discover uh, any unknown relationships uh, within those systems. Over the last few years, data mining has been successfully implemented in a number of areas, including quality control, 
um, crime detection. Uh, it's also being used in now, uh, I'm sure you've heard scientific research. Uh, managers will use expert systems to receive guidance, uh, typically during the decision-making process, if they have time in the decision, if the decision is not uh, in such a decision that needs to be made critically, or, or well, not necessarily critically, but uh, quickly, rather. And there are several advancements, or there have been several advancements in the field of IT. The two major types of e-commerce that we talked about before are B2C and um, B2B. B2C is business consumer, B2B is business to business. And there have been changes in terms of e-commerce in both uh, types of, of uh, selling of products and services over the network. Firms have been able to develop a stronger relationship with customers by using Web 2.0 as it helps create a richer, more interesting, and a more useful experience. Uh, Web 2.0 techniques are used to encourage collaboration amongst, cu amongst customers and to help employees to work together more efficiently. The use of Web 2.0 technologies within organizations is often called, and I don't know if you've heard of this before, Enterprise 2.0. Legitimate viral marketing campaigns do not use computer viruses. I just wanted to state that despite the name. Uh, viral marketing is nothing to do with viruses. Uh, viral marketing attempts to get customers uh, to communicate the firm's message without the 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 company itself doing so. It, it basically, it's, it attempts to create such a widespread acknowledgement of the benefits of using a product or service that customers will tell each other uh, by social media or other ways. So usually B2C commerce requires the customer to make the payment online, for instance, by using a credit card. So to ensure secure transactions, sites usually use secure socket layer protocol, which is SSL, SSL. Uh, cyber intermediary is another mode of secure electronic transfer of funds that can be made over the internet. Electronic bill, Presentment and payment can be used to send bills uh, via customer email. And just to back, back to B2B, so B2B e-commerce requires a large sum of money and negotiation as it often <coughs> results in long-term supply uh, chain relationships. For this reason, forging Tight and efficient relationships is really important to res uh, in order to achieve that competitive edge in business. E-marketplaces are specialized internet sites that are used by several firms involved in B2B business. Buyers and suppliers can use this platform for interaction with one another. Radio frequency identification, um, also known as RFID, uh, reduces the likelihood of theft. It lowers costs. It... Uh, improves the efficiency of the supply chain. An RFID is a microchip. They're, they're tiny, tiny little microchips that store information um, that then transmit the information when they, whenever they're in range of an RFID reader, a special little reader. So let's talk a little bit about security concerns, including malware and spam. And there are a number of security concerns. There are annoyances, there are legal and ethical issues resulting from all of these technological advancements that we talked about. Uh, some of the threats of the internet and IT include, like I said, malware, spyware, there's viruses, there's worms, um, spam tends to clog up our inboxes, they make it tough for people to uh, actually get to their legitimate messages. I don't, know, I don't think we talked about it in this class, but on average, the average white collar worker, so white collar professional workers like most of us in business. Average white collar worker today gets over a hundred emails on a daily basis. And um, about 20% of those emails can be spam. That's a lot of junk mail that we're getting, a lot of junk mail. Uh, farming is another issue, fishing and farming. So farming uses, well, first, uh, fishing is a way that we, that a way that hackers use spam. Um, so farming uses fake websites to trick people 
to divulge their personal or their financial information. Uh, phishing is a way that spam is used to, to do the same thing. It, it sends out spam it sends directly to people and tries to get them to divulge their personal information. Now, hackers, hackers are people that intend to cause harm. We, well, no, no, no I shouldn't say that. Hackers are anybody who's very skilled, their expertise, uh, they have expertise in the computer. But hackers, typically it has a pejorative context. It has a, a, a fairly negative con, uh, connotation for most um, people, but you can really, but, but to, to really define and to say that the hacker is, is definitely up to no good, uh, they're often those types of hackers that are out there to cause harm. We often call these uh, black hat hackers, black hat ha hackers. Um, those are hackers. Their intent is to cause harm. And their attempt is also, they're all, also out there trying to attempt to disrupt businesses, to break into computer systems. They're out there to steal identities. Um, they're out there to do bad things in the world, right? Not all hackers are bad, but for the most part, we think of them as, 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 as well, for the most part, they're bad, right? So uh, it's important that we have firewalls. A firewall is an important tool as it helps guard against hackers. It guards against other threats. And they be, I mean, they're available everywhere. You can find them, they're commonplace. We use them in, in business and uh, uh, business and we even use them in, in home. So finally, let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the, complicated and controversial ethical issues uh, that are that have risen due to uh, the rising of IT. So personal privacy has decreased as the tracking and analysis of customer behavior has increased. On the plus side, it's helped firms to offer more personalized services. But on the downside, um, they've given up so much in terms of privacy. If you if, if you were wondering if it isn't real, your phone can listen to what it is that you're saying, even when you're not on your phone, even when you're not on your phone. Um, there are also issues in terms of ethical and legal issues in terms of, or, or that have to do with uh, intellectual property, intellectual property protection. So intellectual, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> intellectual property is property that we can protect by copyrights or <coughs> copyright law or other types of uh, intellectual property protection. Um, it's, uh, it's becoming difficult to protect our copyrighted IP because of the widespread access in the internet. Um, anytime, anytime copyrights are violated, we call that violation uh, piracy, piracy, and it's becoming prevalent in today's day. That for technology, and it was such a pleasure um, getting to know all of you over the course of the semester. And I hope that uh, you do well on your final. If you have any questions, shoot them out to me. And uh, that was our last chapter in Business 100. I hope to see you in other classes again. Entrepreneurship classes. We have a couple of entrepreneurship classes. Uh, Almost every semester, there's at least two being offered at Miramar College, and they're really good. I also teach business communications and other business classes here at Miramar College, so take them. And um, it was nice getting to know you over the course of the semester. Take care. Bye-bye.